and welcome to this new video. Today I want to talk again about e-paper price tags or shelf labels as they are called internationally. These are from the company called Han Shao. Han Shao. It's a Chinese uh, brand and they are available in a few different sizes and also in a few different versions. This version I have here and also the blue freezer version or a different screen size version is using a TLSR 8359 SOC which is a 2.4 GHz um, ARM core microcontroller and it's a very similar one to the one used in the Xiaomi thermometer you may heard of where I made the custom firmware for it. I was able to snack quite a few of them from eBay for not so much money and was quite surprised or happy that they use the TLSR chip. You can detect if they uh, use the TLSR chip by the LED they have here on the top if the focus will work right here if this one is black it will not have the TLSR but a CC2 something chip so an 8051 core um, and if the LED is white you will get the TLSR version of them these are the stellar displays and why we are here today is because I want to show you how to get the custom firmware running on them. Like on the Xiaomi thermometer, it's luckily possible to enable Bluetooth low energy by uh, just flashing the uh, SDK or the compiling from the TLSR uh, 8251, which is the same chip with Bluetooth low energy enabled. And so far the only thing not working is the OTA updates. But as we use a UART converter to flash them, we have no problem for now. And later the OTA update the over the app firmware update can be enabled via a custom OTA mechanism. And today I want to just show how to get started, how to compile the custom firmware, which will evolve in the future it's for now just not at all very functional I just wanted to yeah give a point where to start and also how to attach the USB converter like I have here which is using a CH340 chip and thanks to Victor he also continued the development of the Mi thermometer firmware. We got a nice web flasher. I was able to edit it a bit to unlock the labels and to also flash uh, them via um, any browser that supports web serial. And yeah, to get started, we just have to solder a few wires onto it and then I can show you how to upload the firmware and you could do it as well if you ever find some of these and yeah let's get started with it here is just for reference one um, opened up display to yeah, show what's inside here would be connected the e-paper display itself here is the microcontroller and a few driving parts I removed to yeah, check the deep sleep better. On the back side we have a few connections. For once the big connections for the battery pack. And also the small debug uh, test points. And yeah, the case itself is glued together or ultrasonic welded. But the battery part can be easily removed with a screwdriver or a tweezer in my case. So we need to push in these little tabs to pull out the battery apartment. Like so, if I get it right here. 
So we can see one side is lifted up and it seems to spring back. So we need to hold it a bit. In my case I'm using my fingernail. And then we can do the same on the other side to also pull it apart like this. And the other side is just yeah rested in there. And here we can see for once the two CR batteries and also again the test points and the battery connections as well. We want to connect four wires or five depending on what you want to do from here to some Dupont wires and then connect them again to a USB to serial converter like I got here. And I yeah, want to show to you which connection goes where. In general, I have here the pin out, which you can also find on GitHub. We yeah, just want to connect the VCC pin to the 3.3 volt coming from the USB to uh, UART converter. The ground, the reset pin here we need to connect to the RTS pin of the UART converter and the SVS labeled pin on the e-paper display we want to connect to the TXD pin so the transmit pin of the converter. We also can connect the TXD pin of the display to the RXD pin of the UART converter to also have some yeah, debug output possibilities to read what the display itself is putting out to yeah, just have some debug output uh, in addition to the display or the yeah, LED, the RGB LED we have here on the front. On the other labels the procedure is quite the same. We have also this yeah, battery apartment which we can open up and there yeah in this case we have a connected battery like so but in general the yeah pin out is labeled as well you just have to yeah do the same connections like here of course with the right labeling to solder the whole thing, you would use a yeah, soldering iron, of course. And as you see here, I have prepared it on this one. I'm using these mild copper wires as they yeah, tend to be quite easy to solder and they will not rip apart these test pins like um, the Dupont wires may do if you bend them too much. And yeah, so now let's go to the PC and yeah, I will show you how to continue there. To get started with the firmware part, you can first download this repo called ATC TLSR paper. It's named that way as uh, it will maybe support yeah, stuff later, different versions of the Hans Howell displays and so on. For once you have the link here, it will maybe look different later, where you will be yeah, uh, linked to the UART flasher, but as well you have the pinout here. Again, to look for it, also we have the general pinout of the TLSR chip with everything labeled and the firmware of course. I made it so that the firmware is fully one click. So if we now download it as a zip file, we can see that it is quite big. But this is because the Linux compiler and also Windows compiler is included and everything needed to get started. So I will quickly unzip that file and bring it onto the monitor. Like so. 
And if we now go into it and go into firmware, we can see for once the make it file. And on Linux, you would simply go with the terminal into that folder and write make. The only thing you have to install is Python, which is in most of the case already there. So if I would, for example, now click on make it, it will start to compile the firmware. And in the end, if I refresh now, or just delete it for now. So now the yeah, compiled firmware is gone, but it should be there when the compiling is done. So we will quickly wait for it. And as you can see, the firmware is now created. And to get started and flash this firmware onto the chip itself or onto the display, I have it prepared here. This is a fully stocked display to show it as best as possible. And yeah, I will just simply connect it. And you yeah, may should see how it blink. Let's just retry it. But yeah, maybe not, not so big of a problem. In the flasher, we can click on open and select the correct COM port. In my case, it's the COM4, which will be different for you. After that, we can just test, for example, to yeah, erase the CPU. And now you also saw the blinking. This is for once because the SVS pin, so the pro programming pin, is also connected to the LED. But the blue LED is also blinking on boot on these displays. On first flashing, we first have to unlock the display as the stock firmware will lock the lower half of the internal memory of the TLSR. So we can hit the unlock flash button. This will erase the flash and also yeah, will of course unlock it. And I will now quickly open up the firmware, which we compiled just now, like so. And yeah, we can then directly flash it onto the chip. And as you see now, it, yeah, it starts to blink and light up the blue LED. This is again because of the yeah, SVS programming pin is connected directly to it. The firmware itself is very basic right now and I just want to get it started overall and to sh show how to get started. Right now it will just print some lines. As you see now, the firmware is correctly flashed. And yeah, the display did reflash, refresh. And by now we should also be able to open e the NIF Connect app for example to have a new BLE device nearby. So if I will quickly open it up, we have the new ESL device here. And if I got everything still right, we should be able to write a zero one or something to the display. Let me just quickly check it out. Ah, it's a B1. Okay, we just quickly have to send B1 to the display and it then should refresh if everything works as intended. If I did, yeah, right to the correct one and yeah, that worked. So we saw the display refreshing. Okay, that's it already for the Hanshao e-paper shelf label price tag etc. You could perfectly use this as a thermometer as well as the TLSR chip has an internal temperature sender and as we do, no, do not use it much it will not heat up by itself because of the deep sleep. That way we can yeah sh or could use it in a room yeah, writing the temperature and maybe some outside data sent to it via Bluetooth and some news, maybe a clock with partial refresh and yeah, the batteries overall should last a very long time. 
The resolution, by the way, is 250 by 122, if I reckon correctly. And I quite like these devices, especially with the enabled Bluetooth.